So today I'm going to show you how you can use your Creative Memories Circle Cutter to cut some of the curved shapes within the sunrise sunset. Um, I was inspired by one of the designs in the illustration. Just note when I first created this pattern, I neglected to add the half inch spacing around the end of my page. So after I cut all my circles, I cut a six by six mat and I mounted them on the mat, reversing the, the pattern sheets. So two went this way and two went with the later center. But from that, I can do a whole bunch of different combination of looks, as you see here. Are we all set? Your homework before you do this is to create a centering square for your Creative Memory Circle Cutter and to have practiced using your circle cutter. There are two videos in the description below, one on how to make this and the other one on how to use your circle cutter by Creative Memories. Once your homework's done, we're all set to go. We're going to select our paper. I'm using the new um, Tropical Wave cardstock and the um, paper from the Weaving Waves texture, which I thought would be really great on this one as a background. So I'm going to set my background paper aside for now. And this one here, we want it to be 11 by 11 inches. And there's two ways you can do this. Number one is to cut an inch off two sides and have it all set. I'm going to want a frame that I may want to put on my end piece. So to do my frame, I am going to cut it using my trimmer. So I'm setting my paper in there and I've got my cutter set with the clips at the half inch mark. So we're going to set that all around. There's my half inch mark here and I'm set to cut between 11 and a half inches here and a half inch here. So here we go. Number one, rotate, go to the half inch mark. Rotate, go to the half inch mark again. And one last cut. And I'm going to have my nice final frame piece, which would look really good on a page. So we'll set that to the side because we don't need it. Next piece we are going to do is set this one on our mat at the 11 by 11 so it's nice and square. For this, I want it to be square, so I am going to hold it down with a little bit of washi tape at the corners so it doesn't run away on me. Once my paper is set in place, I'm going to assist the placement of my centering strip for my circle cutter by marking my page. One and a half. And I'm going to give that a little mark. And again, from the bottom, one and a half. Because this is a three inch ruler, it will do it for me automatically. So if I go on the center here and here, there we go. As long as I am even top and bottom there, I will be across here. So one, two, and I have my centers. So here we are. I am going to place my note in between these marks. 
and I can check it with my ruler. That looks good. So I am all set to go for my trimmer. I'm going to have my grid sheet here with my instructions. The largest cut, we're going to start with the outside and work our way in. So the first cut is going to go off the page a bit. So we're going to set our circle cutter at the 11.8 mark. And don't forget, it shows the little cutter in uh, white, pen and black. We're going to go all the way to the 11.8, which is one line below our 12. Line that up on our ruler. we go. That's my 11.8. Next one is going to be at the 10 inch mark. Again, you don't have to cramp your hands and hold it down because you do have your centering piece. You can just go ahead and make your adjustment. Tighten it up and then recenter. In between my two lines, even at the 10, even with the 10, away we go. This one is 9.8. Tighten it up, I'm ready to go. Next one is our 8 inch. And I'm going to continue all the way down to the 4 inch. At the 4 inch mark, you're starting to cut your paper. So our final two cuts will take out some of my note. Last cut is at the the circle cuts are done put away your circle cutter time to do some uh, final adjustments you will notice that this last piece here was not cut because the circle cutter doesn't go out far enough so we will have to um, freehand cut these pieces I'll show you how to do that um, the spacing in between all the lines are going to be facilitated by removing these little strips so you're all set now the cut itself on your diagram it does have a eighth of an inch or quarter inch uh, gap in between the center my exacto knife and a ruler 
for cutting things with my exacto knife i like using my metal ruler with the cork grid at the bottom because the cork will hold all of my paper steady i'm just going to go shy of the center line on one side hold all that down grab my exacto knife and i'm going to operate and formulate that first cut oh then we're going to go again on the other side of this line there we go so i'm cutting into the edge Again, we have to do the same thing in the other direction. Because I like cutting vertically, I'm just going to rotate my mat the 90 degrees and go again. And one more side. And there we have it. All our pieces are now basically done and almost ready to go back on the final mat. So we can remove these strips. For the last corners, in the page here we're going to have to re-sketch these little bits so in order to facilitate that we're going to use the assistance of this last piece pattern to get the curve we want we're just going to mark this last piece i'm going to be using the grid lines on the mat itself to do that let me see if i can zoom in a little bit closer for you all right so i am going to go at the one and three quarter mark the two inch mark and the last one would be three and a half because we want to make that space right so here we are going at the two and the one and the three quarter so I'm just going to take my last piece. I'm going to slide it over on those hash marks. Try to keep it centered on either side. Just to give us our little grid sketch that we're going to have to free cut. So this will make my eighth inch groove. I go between here and here for the first one. I kind of leave it lining up at the So the outside edges are even on the 12 pattern. You can kind of see where that cut's going to be. Down there, and one more time, quarter inch lower. So that looks about the same. That looks about the same. Everything's square. And we're going to go here. So unlike using the whole template, the only tracing and cutting you're going to have to do is just these three lines on all four corners. So repeat that with those four corners, give them a snip with your scissors, and you're all set to put things on your background page. Well, this is where it certainly helps to have two of the 13 by 13 mats. I moved all my pieces and decided how I was going to flip them to go on my final page. Because this is a water theme, I am going to go with um, just that outside rippling effect. And it's going to look great on that tropical wave paper. So we're going to set this aside and we'll go on to how to do the next part. Let's see if I can get both things in my screen here for you. 
there we are. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to center our, uh, place our 12 by 12 piece of paper on our mat. I'm going to work again from the inside out. So the first one we are going to place, assistance of your multi-tool, is my centerpiece. This one I'm keeping in a full circle. And I'm going to eyeball it up here. And then I'm going to place my ruler on top. Again, I'm going to go at the halfway zero on this end, right? The halfway point on this end. And this should center between the twos. So we're going to go over this way just a little bit. And then we're going to rotate the ruler again. And we're going to check our vertical. That looks good. So that one is where we want it to be. Time for some fun adhesive, eh? Next Pratt and Grit, these ones are going to be just outside that line. You can pull in if you want, if you still have them floating around, some of your little spacers to see how you're edging. Of course, once it's set, it's great to just go ahead and place all these pieces. All my pieces have been pre-fixed with the adhesive, so they're ready to stick down. And again, I like using the repositional tape when I'm doing this type of work, in case you have to do a little bit of jiggling in the end. So here's a look at the final page I made using the sketch layout. Information on how to get the printed instructions to go with this video are indicated in the link below. The instructions I've written does give you the option of using the square images at the bottom of the layout with the arches on the top or you can cut the full circles to create this page. Once again, thank you for supporting my channel and subscribing. We'll see you again soon.